We're grateful this morning that God has allowed us to see another day. I don't know about you, but whenever God allows me to see a new day, it's a beautiful day. It doesn't matter if it's snowing, it's raining, it's a tornado, it's still a beautiful day. Let's give God some praise this morning. Yes, lift him up. He said, if I be lifted up. From the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Church, let's come alive. Our God is alive. He's not dead. He's alive. This morning, uh, as we open up Proverbs 3, chapter number 3, verses 5 and 6, it tells us to trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto our own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. And I'm a living witness that if we acknowledge God, he will direct our path. Sometimes I'm going down the wrong highway. And I was reminding uh, my son this morning, I said, you know, when you're on the highway, and especially in Tennessee, the exits are far apart and when sometimes you get off the exit you're in another township but with God he can make an exit where there is no exit yes. what an awesome God we serve yes. aren't you glad you know him this morning yes. Yes. aren't you glad he knows you this morning yes. hallelujah Amen. this morning what I would like for us to do is to Take a few moments of quietness before God and repent. The Bible says in Psalm 66 and 18, if I regard iniquity means sin in my heart, God will not hear us. So let's just take a moment to repent. You speak to God about your situation. morning I want to do something different. I feel the spirit of God in the house. Praise God. There's something all about him. Amen. Amen. There was a blue chair in the sanctuary. Oh, it's over there in the corner.
don't stop because I'm walking. Lord, we love you. 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 Lord, Yes, praise Him. He inhabits the praises of His people. It's more than just lifting up holy hands. It's lifting up our hearts toward Him so that He may show Himself strong on our behalf. I asked the young man, I asked and the young minister brought up the chair. But God says, that's not the way I want to do it. <laughs> Anyone that has an ailment this morning, get on the front row. Just come and sit on the front row. Amen. Hallelujah. If you can, take your time. Amen. Yes. Sister Jan, how Sister Adele? She's moving. We can use both, both of the front rows. God said to have you sit on the front row. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. Praise Him. Praise Him. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Hallelujah. Thank you. There's healing in the house. Yes. 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 Thank you. Yes. Thank you. But the scripture that God is giving me says, They that wait yes. upon the Lord mm -hmm. shall renew their strength. Yes. They shall mount up with wings yes. like yes. They shall run. And not be weary. They shall walk. And not faint. Oh, yes. You are obedient to come to the front of the church, and God says you're going to wait yes, until yes, the woman yes, of God yes, yes. brings the message. Yes. Amen. And then the healing will begin. Hallelujah. Yes. Because God said, I'm going to give the glory. Yes. Yep. Hallelujah. So if you just see what, let's just see what God's going to do. Yes. Let's just let God have yes. his way. Yes. And this morning, as we be prepare ourselves for the message, keep your mind on the word that's going to go forth. I don't know what the message is. I haven't asked. I don't ask preachers what they're going to preach. All I know is that they're going to preach. They're going to, it's going to be the word of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And this morning, some of you may know her and some may not. Our minister, our very own minister, Molden, will be ministering to us through the word. And we're going to ask if she will come now and allow the Spirit of God to let her minister in whatever way that he sees fit. Amen. Minister Molden, if you will come. Amen. To Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
right. sing just a little bit of this song to encourage yeah. you this morning. Mm -hmm. You can make it. You can take it. You can do it by the grace of God. Yeah. For I know you can make it. Yeah. And you can take it. You can do it by the grace of God. Have you ever had a storm in your life? And it seems like it just won't go away. Just won't go away. Hold your head up. Hang on in there. Cause there's gonna be a brighter day. Just tell yourself, say, I ain't gonna wait. Because trouble don't last always. And I ain't gonna wait all my time. Talk to yourself and tell yourself, say, I ain't gonna wait for the storm to cease in my life. I'm gonna wait on the sunshine. Cause I've learned how to wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. How to wait on the Lord. Cause I've learned how to wait on the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You just wait on the Lord. No matter how long it takes. Praise God. Amen. So glad to be back into the house of the Lord this morning and see all your beautiful faces. Amen. Amen. And today I'm not going to be before you long because I think the deacon, I'm just going to continue what the deacon in our Sunday school lesson this morning. Yeah. So many things that our deacon said this morning, God had already put it into my spirit. So I know that we were all on one accord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But today, if I had a message for you, it is stay in the race. Amen. Don't fall by the wayside, but stay in the race. Amen. And we know that life is a journey. Mm -hmm. This is just preparation for all that the Lord has in store for us. And that is eternal life. Yes. To have some hardship, you're going to shed some tears. Yes. Whether it comes from sickness, death of a loved one, or even tears yeah. of joy. For whatever comes your way is part of life. Yeah. Yeah. It comes with the package of serving God. Yeah. I heard so many say that I didn't know it was going to be this hard when I changed my life. Hmm. But how God never told us it was going to be easy. Yeah. It comes along with being who you are in Christ. you got to stay in the race and don't alleviate. And in the end, you will win. Yeah. Let's go before the throne of God this morning. And Father God, as I, your maidservant, come before thee this morning, I ask you, God, in the name of Jesus, to empty this vessel and fill it with your spirit, O oh God. Lord, I ask you, Lord, to anoint me afresh. These lips of clay, they only speak what you say speak, Father. For you said that your word will not return back to you void. Hallelujah. And whatever you send out, it will accomplish. And Lord, we ask all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we are going to our scripture is coming from 1 Corinthians 9, chapter 24th and 27th <coughs> verse. But before we get into our scripture, you heard of the story of the tortoise and the hare. A hare, he constantly boasted that he was fastest of all the animals. So, so tiring of the hare's arrogance, a tortoise challenged him to a foot race. Now, the hare clearly could have won, but because he was so certain of his victory, so full of pride in his great abilities, he took a nap in the middle of the race. And while the hare was sleeping, the tortoise crossed the finish line. Mm -hmm. He did the, 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 the hare was over here, and he was leaning back with his head, head behind his back, with his legs crossed, right there at the finish line. But he went to sleep. <laughs> but the tortoise, being patient, mm -hmm. just glided on by. Mm -hmm. 
See, patience is a ver is a vehicle yes. that will lead you to the finish line. Uh -huh. And but when the Jordan, he just looked back at it. Praise God! Isn't that like a lot of us today? In certain ways, many Christians living in the city of Corinth during the first century were like the tortoise and the hand. And we're going to go into our word today, and I'm not going to be before you long, because like I said, our Sunday school lesson, I believe our, our deacon, he just preached this morning, and I'm telling you, I, I was just fired up just from that. Amen. But today, let's go to second, uh, 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, the 24th and 25th verse. Those of you that have your Bible, you, if you can stand, if you can, it's okay. And Paul says this, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receive the prize? So run that ye may attain. And every man that strive for the mastery is temperate in all things, but now they do it to attain a corruptible crown. But we are incorruptible. Amen. In my spirit, this is a particular scripture. You can have your seats. Paul was writing to the church in Corinth because some serious problems that we talked about this morning that was going on. The people in Corinth have a reputation as an unruly, hard drinking, sexual, promiscuous bunch of people. They were committing every kind of sin that they come across. And that's how so many of us do. We are out on the weekends, we're partying, and we're doing all these other things. But on Sunday mornings, we hardly get into the church. And I'm going to talk about me just a little. Years and years ago, because I don't want to put anybody down, but I'm going to talk about me just a little bit. Years ago, I remember when I was in New York, my mother-in-law, she up. I always wanted me to go to church with them. And I was so sure that Sunday morning I was going to sing in the choir. But I went out that Friday night, partying all night. Went out Saturday, partying Saturday night. Sunday morning I thought, sure, I was going to be able to sing. When I got up there to leave that song, nothing came out of my mouth. Nothing came out of my mouth. I had a hangover. Oh, all I wanted to do was to go to bed. And then they say, well, if you get you another drink, you feel bad. I said, no, all I need is some sleep. And what am I saying? I'm saying that you can't play with God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You will either have to be in or you have to be out. Yeah, right. Hallelujah. You have to serve him or you can serve the devil. Right. You can only serve one master. Right. Yeah, that's right. Praise God. And that taught me a lesson that I am not going to play with God. Mm. Praise the Lord. It didn't, it didn't mean that I had just completely changed, but... I knew I grew up in the church. I knew that he was wrong, but I thought the next morning if I drank a cup of coffee, I'd feel better. But soon as it made it worse. And I thank God that I'm here today. Sometimes God's usual testimonies to help yeah. somebody else yeah. Yeah. along the way. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. But here we see that Paul had received some information from a several sources concerning the conditions existing in the court church. I'm talking about some church folks now. Some members from other households, even other people from other churches, saw what these Corinthian people were doing, and they took and they were so concerned about it that they had to get in touch with Paul. And it says that there was a division in the church. Mm -hmm. Why? Because one said he belonged to Paul. The other said he belonged to Apollos. And one said to Sykes Cephas, which was Peter. And then some said they belonged to Christ. Well, the one that belonged to Christ, they the winners. Amen. They gonna win. Amen. But here I, I'm here today to tell you that they were they were so caught up in themselves that they thought they had it all together. They had all the riches. And they thought that was gonna get them into heaven. Let me tell you something. Your fine car. Your fine home, all the money in the world will not get you into heaven. If you are not living a Christian life, if you're not living for the Lord, praise God, hallelujah, you will not make it into the kingdom. Now, even Solomon, in all his glory, he said, hallelujah, in the word, he said, the race is not given to the swift, not to the strong. Even Solomon, if Solomon knew that, then that means that we, the race that we're running is eternal. It's eternal. And 
And we got to run this race with patience. There was a division in the church. Paul has spent a year and a half preaching the word of God to them. Many of them believed in Christ and they brought their reputation with them. In other words, whatever they were doing, they still came in the church because that's what the church is for. The church is a hospital. You come in with whatever's going on in your life. And it's like you said, one or planted one water and God gave the increase. And that's what the pastor does. But it's up to you to keep that word on the inside of you. Even after Paul had went and preached for a year and a half, even when and some of them, they accepted the Lord Jesus. But then as soon as Paul went and left and went to another church, some of them went back. Some fell by the wayside. See, one thing about it, some people that when there's a, a, a I'm just going to say when there's a prophet, a prophetess in town, or when there's a new preacher in town, the churches are full because they want a word from the man, not from God, because every prophet and every prophecy is not from God. There's some false prophets out here, but people, they run to the church because they want a word from the Lord. They don't want to hear what God said. You better get your heart right. They want to hear that uh, uh, I need a new car. I want a new house. I need a new job. God will give you those things. He'll give you the desires of your heart if you delight yourself in him. Yeah, That's all you have to do. Yeah. Trust God with everything that you have on the inside of you. Yeah. God knows your heart. Yeah. He knows what's going on on the inside of you. But Paul loved these people. He loved them enough to stay a year and a half to tell them about Jesus. Because Paul said, I remember when. Amen. When, when, gee, when Paul was on the road to Damascus, uh -huh. he thought he was all that. Yeah. He was going to persecute God's people. And Paul, the name Paul means small or humble. And you know why I believe that because he was so big in his own eyes and when God knocked him to the ground, he became small. Yeah, right. Hallelujah. And, and the word humble because he was so high up, God humbled him down to his knees. Yeah. See, God has a way of bringing you to your knees. Yeah. You might be on your way to do something you have no business doing. Yeah. But God has a way to turn you around. Yeah. Sometimes God will take the worst one and make them the best out of the best. He can take a, a man out of the gutter and make him one of the finest men or women in the world. Preachers and teachers and evangelists. Even in his family tree. Prostitutes. Murderers. Hallelujah. Adulterers. But God looks at the heart. And when he saw Paul, he said, I can use him. He said, oh, he's a bold soldier. So if he's bold enough to take and he's going to take my people and persecute my people. Have a letter that wants to go to persecute God's people. God said, I can use him. He said, because what he's going to go through, he's going to do some suffering. And I believe that when Paul was on the road to Damascus, God told him some things that only he knew about. Praise God. Hallelujah. See, God don't speak out everything. Sometimes you've got to shut the door. Preached the sermon last week. Yeah. Week before that, shut the door. Yeah. Yeah. You got to shut the door on some things. Yeah. Because when God is doing something in your life, you can't let everybody know what's going on. Yeah. Hallelujah. And the only way yeah. that people will know that you've been in the presence of God, when you come out, you ain't going to look the same. Yeah. You ain't going to walk the same. Yeah. You ain't going to talk the same. Yeah. You're going to love like God said love. Sometimes you got to shut people out. Because yeah. everybody say they for you, ain't for you. Yeah. Everybody, most of them say they for you, but they're against you. Yeah. And God has told me when I came home one day from work, didn't know what he was talking about. But I walked in and I heard the voice of the Lord say, shut the door. And he wasn't talking about my door. My door was already shut. But he was talking about shut the door to some things. And I began to sit down and I began to write for two hours. Even before I took my work clothes off, thought when God speaks, you gotta listen. Yeah, yeah. And it's for a reason. And I believe this was the case for Paul. Paul heard the voice of the Lord. And he was not gonna let anybody or anything deter him 
from doing the work of the Lord. He set up many churches and he even said that there was 12 temples during the time of Paul. Because in one temple it said that there was this, this uh, God that even the Corinthian church, even they were serving. It said that they were doing all kinds of prostitution and, and it said there was 1,000 prophets, hmm. priests that were serving this God. It was a God of prostitution. Even then, it is still going on today. God knows you. He sees you. And even if you shut your door, God still sees you. Even if you go in your secret closet, God will still see you. But he said this, whatever you do in secret, he said, I will reward you openly. God is here today to do a great and mighty work on the inside of all of you all. Even those of you that's listening to the sound of my voice, some of you all are going through some things. Yeah. But God is going to bring you out. Yeah. It's going to bring you out, but you've got to stay in the race. And I'm not talking about a 100-yard dash. I'm not talking about a 50-yard dash. I'm not even talking about the relay. But I'm talking about a race that you're going to run until eternity. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sometimes we're going to get tired. Sometimes you just want to say, you know, it's, I'm, I'm tired, my body hurts, God. I'm in pain and aches, so oh God. Yeah. Hey, have you ever seen where well, someone has been so tired of being sick that they're ready to give up? Yeah. Yeah. And they just give up. Mm. But God said, don't oh, give up. Because yeah, okay. the battle is almost over. Yeah. Yeah. Don't turn around. Because there's nothing to go back to. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. God is here yeah. for you today. Yeah. So Paul, he writes this letter to encourage them to stay in the race. His response was affection, clear, and firm. He tells them that God is with them in the presence of the Holy Ghost and that God will continue to be the central issue in their life. No matter what we go through, God is with us. God is even in with the sinner man. All God is doing, he just stands by. He waits until we call on him. Yeah. Hallelujah. They say he's so far away, but yet he's so near. He's right with you. Yeah. He said he will never leave us nor forsake because his spirit, it dwells on the inside of us. He yep. lives in us. Yeah. And it said, Paul doesn't disown them as brothers and sisters. As he was saying this morning, he came humble. Mm -hmm. He had compassion with them. Mm -hmm. He takes all or more or less in strict. He takes them by the hand and goes over all the grounds again. He directed them in how to work all the glorious details of God's saving love into their love for one another. All over again. Even if you, you know one thing about it, even you have to continue keep going to that person. If that person not where you are in the Lord, don't give up on them. You keep going back to that person because you know why? Because you don't keep going back to that one person. Even it might be one person. It might be even more than one person. But if God has put that person in your life and you know that person not where you should be, don't you give up on it. But don't just go that one time. You keep going, as like Paul did. You keep going until that person gets where you know that God wants them to get. See, this is what happens. Someone comes into the church, and I'm not just talking about, I'm not even talking about no particular church. But you see someone come in, a lot of times people that move by their emotions and not by the spirit. But when you see a person coming in the church and you know that they want God in their lives, and you're praying for that person, and you took that person's phone number or address or whatever, do you ever call that person? Or do you ever see if that person is still in the Lord? This is what Paul did. Paul was concerned about the people. He didn't say, well, I'm not going to go see about this person. I mean, when they was here, you know, they said they had the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to go see about them. That's our job. Our job is to see about those that's just coming into the fellowship of God. We don't throw them away. We don't throw them under the bus, as they say. But what do we do? Ha! 
Hallelujah. We love one another. This is what Paul was telling the church in Corinthians. Love one another. Some thought they was better than others. Why? Because they had all the, the accolades and credentials and things. And they thought they was better. But God has no respect to persons. He loves us all the same. Paul began to tell them. He said. And the crown is what you will receive if you hold on to God's unchanging hand. You will receive a crown of life. Isn't that what we are, we are trying to, to yeah. Yeah. get the crown of life? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And that word going through. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't that word the eggs and the pain that we, I have eggs and pains too, thanks. Yeah. Hallelujah. But I have to get up in the morning yeah. and I have to do this. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you for the pain. You know, let me tell you something. Some people don't, can't feel the pain. Yeah. Yeah. Some people want to feel it, but they can't feel it. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I remember that there was a, um, I don't know if any of you all seen this, but there was this woman and she had both of her legs. Was numb. She couldn't feel anything. And there was this prophetess. And she came and she said, I want to try this on you. And it was some beads. She took the beads, and the beast stung this, this lady's leg, and she jumped like that. And then she took another one, and she jumped. She had feeling in that leg. Mm -hmm. And then she took the other one, she jumped. And the lady kept bringing beads, and the lady started walking. Well, we don't need that. All we need is Jesus. Amen. That's all we need. Yeah. We don't need all this other stuff. All we need is Jesus. That's right, Hallelujah. Jesus. I get up in the morning. Minus one. I spent a day and a night 
in the open sea, yeah. but I stayed in the race. I got bit by a viper. What I do, I shook it off. Hallelujah. And kept on running. I've been in danger from rivers, and dangers from bandits and robbers, in danger from my own countrymen. See, people are turned against you. He says, I've been in danger from the heathens, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, but I stayed in the race. That was enough right there for some of us to say, hey, I'm hanging up my heart. I, this is too much. I, I can't do this. Uh, God, you didn't tell me I'm going to have to go through all this. You didn't tell me it was going to be this hard. Hallelujah. But Paul said, it's worth it all. Because in the end, I'm going to win. Hallelujah. He said, I've been in danger from both brothers, but I hung in there. He said, I've been without sleep, been thirsty and hungry, and I know how it is to go without food. I've been cold and without clothing, but I kept running. You got to run for your life, saints. I mean, it's, it's actually, this is spiritual. It's time to run for your life. They say, you know, we don't take all that. Yes, it does. It takes all of this and more. Why? It's because if the world can do that thing, why can't you do yours? They're doing everything. Why can't we lift our hands and praise God? Hallelujah. Why can't we be like the volunteers when they have a basketball game or a football game? Why can't we raise our hands and praise God and glorify God? That's all he wants. He wants us to be some cheerleaders. God needs some cheerleaders. Praise God. Now, God needs someone that's going to be bold, stand up for him, even in the midst of what you're going through. you got to thank God. Regardless, he said, praise him in everything. Thank him in everything. That even in our time that we all can't walk or we got a limp or whatever. Jacob had a limp. Hallelujah. But he said, I'm going to let you go until you bless me. Hallelujah. And he said that he lived from this day on. Why? Because he had an encounter with the Lord. When you have an encounter with the Lord, there's something you got to show it. Yeah. There ought to be some kind of sign when you have an encounter with the Lord. Yeah. But Paul said in 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy 4, 6, and 7, he said, For I am ready to be offered. Yeah. And the time of my departure is at hand. Yeah. He was ready. Can we say we ready? I'm not ready yet. Mm. Can you say you ready? Mm. Hallelujah. Can we really and truly say we ready? Mm. I'm not ready yet. But Paul, he speak the test that he went through. Paul, he stood the test. He stood the test. Can we stand the test when somebody's talking about us? Can we stand the test when we are going through even when our family members turn their backs on us? Can we stand the test that even when the church is sitting and don't go see the box, can you still stand the test? Can you still love like God said? Love, it doesn't matter anymore. As long as you got Jesus, yeah, that's right. enough. Yeah, you don't need nobody else. As long as you got him, you guess who my best friend is? Jesus. Yeah, right. Hallelujah. He wakes me up in the morning. In the cool of the day, I can go sit outside. It's me and Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. If I want to party, I party with Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. When I go out to eat, it's me and Jesus. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. When I go to the grocery store, it's me and Jesus. I have no one but Jesus. Hallelujah. Because you, when you're going to find yourself all by yourself in this flesh, but in the spirit, you got Jesus. Yeah. And that's all you're going to need. Paul said, I fought a good fight. Hallelujah. He said, Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge. See, everybody else will judge you. But God said, The righteous judge shall give me at that day, and not only me, but to all of you. God is going to give us, hallelujah, a crown. That's laid up just for us. And I'm working for that crown. Yeah. Yeah. See, I can't speak for nobody else. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm talking about me now. When I think and I, and I look back how far God has brought me. Yeah. Hallelujah. I thank God that he brought me from where I was. Yeah. We might not have went through what Paul went through. But we went through something. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
that God is taking us to another uh, level in him like he did Paul. Paul, hallelujah. When they saw Paul coming, they was afraid. Even when God told Ananias that I'm sending him because I can use him. Because he's going to stuff a lot of things. Ananias had fear on the inside of him because they couldn't have heard what he could do. Paul was a bully. Hallelujah. And he had his cup buddies with him when he was going doing all these things. But if you want to live right, if you want to do what God uh, uh, wants you to do, all you have to do is say, God, I surrender. Yeah. Lord, every day I have to tell God, I surrender. You know why I have to ask God? I said, Lord, if I sin. Yeah. See, a lot of times we sin, we don't even know we sin. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Every day I said, Lord, if I sin, if I did anything, I of your will. Lord God, I ask you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, to take it out. Even if I feel like I hurt somebody at my job Thursday, well, we have a cutoff time. It's 8.30. The children are up there by 8.30. They don't get in. Well, I heard someone ringing the doorbell, and they kept ringing and ringing. It was 8.33, so I couldn't open the door. So we looked out, and they said, well, they know what time to come, so we can't let them in. Well, the pastor comes all the way from the front, and we all the way in the back, and he comes to open the door. I said, you can't do that. I said, no, 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 no. I said, you can't do that. I said, this is a daycare, and we have a cutoff day. So, you know, God picked my spirit. I said, Lord, you're the same right. But I went to the pastor, mm -hmm. and I said, Pastor, you know, I don't know if I said that right or not. He's like, no, babe. No. You know I didn't take that offense. I said, but I did. I said, if I said anything wrong, forgive me. See, I'm going to tell you something. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all need to ask for forgiveness. Yeah, yeah. Some of y'all need to ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Yeah. Some of you all need to ask God and yeah. ask for people yes, yes. to forgive you yes. as a child. Right, yeah. yeah. God wants us to ask for forgiveness. I don't care what it is. Yes. We got to get all this stuff off the eye inside of us. Yes, get it out. So God can fill us with his spirit. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. Oil and water do not mix. Yeah. Right. And, and if oil and water don't mix, what's on the inside of you, the Holy Ghost is not going to mix. God is not going to come in for it until you ask for forgiveness. Right. Yes, okay. Hold anything in your heart. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I'm going to say what God tells me to say. Sometimes yeah. what's on the paper, God takes it from exactly. the paper. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. your heart. Yeah. But it's time for forgiveness. Yeah. And we want to grow in Christ. There are many people I had to go to. Many of them. Some came to me okay. because I hadn't done anything, but I feel that God, if that's what it takes yes. for me to be holy, yes. Yes. let me go to them. Yes. Let me ask for forgiveness. Yes. Okay. Even a child, I've had good children, you know, because they, they're little people, and one day they're going to take our place. Amen. So we got to know how to treat everybody. Exactly. Everybody. Yes. Because see, God sees and God knows yes. what's in your heart. That's right. Hallelujah. Yes. But today, God wants you. Yes. You. I hope you're listening to me. God wants you to forgive some people. Okay, okay. Regardless who you say you are in Christ, you still got to forgive. Okay. That's one of the main things said. His disciples say, how many times? He says, seven times, seven. But nowadays, it doesn't matter how many times. You got to forgive. Okay. In order for your ministry to grow, yes. in order for you to grow, yes. there's some things on the inside, God, that you got to get rid of junk in your life. Yes. Right. There's a lot of junk in our yes. life that God wants to, he wants to take out. Yes. Yes. See, I can start with me. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. All this jealousy, this backbiting, this gossip, and all this stuff is right. not part of God. Yes. Yes. Get Praise out. the Lord, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, Sometimes yeah. I look at my phone and see the still on because I don't have people calling me. Oh, amen, yeah. amen. Get what out. can I talk about? If you can't talk about God, if I can't call to see about you, yeah. how you feel me? Don't call me in the church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Amen. amen. Because I'm right. striving yeah. to right. make it into hell. Yeah. Yeah. These are crucial times now. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're saved, that you're saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, how you better live it. Yes. Yes. Don't act like it. Act like you want to be an actor that won't play in Hollywood. Yeah, that's you need yeah. to know. But God is looking for seriousness. Yes. He's looking for people that say, God, I'll go even if I have to go by myself. Amen. And guess what? That's where I'm at. Amen. Hallelujah. Wherever God tell me to go, saints, I'm going. Okay. God tell me to preach. Hallelujah. 
If you tell me to go and preach Bible water, I'm going to preach to the water. Okay. Right. Fishing. Yeah. Amen. Whatever, God. If Where? you tell me to go by the trees, yeah. I'll preach to the birds. No. Yeah. Whatever God tells me to go, i got to be obedient to God. Yeah. It's not about being obedient to man. Yeah. Right. But it's being obedient to God first. Yes. Amen. Yep. Into your past. Amen. Praise yes. God. Because it's so important that I, I know this, that if I'm going to preach somewhere, my pastor knows. If I'm not here, she knows where I'm at. Yes, okay. That's yeah. obedience. Right. Yeah. But God wants us. And then, let me say this. Mm -hmm. I'm letting the Holy Ghost speak, God. Okay. All right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Speak it. Yeah. This is Amen. not a one-time thing. Yeah. Don't come to church one Sunday. Don't see it for a whole year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Speak, Lord. Amen. Come okay. on into the church. Okay. Come on in the house. Yes, Lord. 
I was just, I don't know, I have dreams. I don't know if I'm dreaming or not. Had me a dream. But I was on my knees praying. Mm -hmm. And I saw my husband being down beside him. Mm -hmm. And we was praying. Oh. Because on his deathbed, I told him, I said, tell God what you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all I told him. Tell yeah. God what you want. Yeah. Yeah. See, it, it's like this. When you in God, <coughs> there's no tears. Yeah. <laughs> Of sadness. Yeah. I know one day I gotta go. Yeah. I gotta cross over. Yeah. Right. We all gonna cross over. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna go back to the dust for one day. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. God is good. Oh. It's mercy and yeah. good forever. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. In my conclusion, don't let nothing nor anyone yeah. deter you for making it to the finish line. Yes. Don't turn from the truth. Yes. You might have to jump over some hurdles. You might even have to knock some down. Mm. But stay in the race. Yes. Keep your focus on God. Yes. Not on things. Hallelujah. You can look around, you know. But you got to keep your focus on God. Yes. You got to set your face like Flint. Yes. Because if you get your mind off of God, and sometimes even in church, and I'm guilty of this, sometimes you can be in church and you can be saying amen, you don't know what you're saying amen to because uh -huh. your mind not even on what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> your mind is on everything else. Yeah. Right. Right. Then the word. Mm -hmm. Praise God, hallelujah. I'm guilty of that. I'm guilty because many times I'm like, well, where am I going to go eat at? Or, <laughs> or what am I going to eat? Yeah. Or, or what restaurant? Where am I going to meet the kids at? <laughs> or uh, Jesus loves me, this I 